Good morning, everyone. We are being encouraged by how much the Father loves us, how much He cares for us, how much He thinks of us. And so one of the ideas there is that to encourage us, we need occasionally go back to that whole question, God, when did you first know me? Then the next question is, God, why did you make me this way? <laughs> because often as we look around us and we look at the cultures around us, we go, God, why did you make me this way? How come I'm not taller? How come I'm not thinner? How come I'm not fatter? God, how come I'm not more muscular? God, how come I can't sing? God? And so we have all this whole list of things that go on and on and on in our hearts and minds, as opposed to realizing that the Father has made us just as he designed us to be. One of my dear friends uh, was dealing with a, a, a uh, person who was incapacitated in several ways and was wondering, why did God make me this way? Did God make a mistake? No, God never makes mistakes. Often God wants to teach us something. Often, sometimes we are a lesson for someone else. I remember several times uh, as a young parent, uh, people in our age group are having children with uh, disabilities. And they're going, what do I do? And often the parents would come rushing in you've, with some agenda. You've got to do this, that, and the other. And other parents had to say, no, we need to love them. There's a wonderful commercial during the Olympics at the Handicapped uh, Disabled Olympics where the young woman, uh, they tell her story. She's a swimmer. And so they call and say, we found a daughter for you. But her legs are going to have to go. But the mother says, oh, great, this is the best thing since sliced bread. Why? Because we love these people. We love our children the way they are given to us, the way they are blessed to us. Yet, we complain. Why did you make me this way? How come I can't? How come I look at so-and-so and I'm much more encouraged by what they're doing? As opposed to realizing, again, that the Father has made us the way he has designed us to be and accept that. I know in our culture that pushes your buttons here and there and there and there and over there and how come, why? Center on the fact that the Father loves you and has made you the way you are morphologically, spiritually, physically because you are his vessel of incredible design. Now, where do we go for this? Let's go to Psalm 139. Now, if you hang out with me very often, you know that this is my favorite psalm. But in the middle of it, in verses 13 through 17, it tells us why God made us this way and how God has made us. Because in this, there are four descriptions of how we are made. And so hear them as I read this. Here it is. For you, God, formed my inward parts. You wove me together in my mother's womb. I will give thanks for you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. My frame was not hidden from you. I was skillfully wrought in the depths of the earth. God, your eyes have seen my unformed substance, and in your book are written down all the days given to me, when even there was not yet one of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God! How vast is the sum of them! There's no whining and complaining there. Now is there? What's happening there? God, you formed my inward parts. Lord, you have made me inside and out. You have formed me with your own hand. Let that sink in for a second. You have formed me with your own hand. Live there. Next, you wove me together in my mother's womb. Think fine embroidery. Or if you're older like me, you would think in terms of crochet, the intricate designs that go on inside. As people embroider, they crochet things and make designs and designs upon designs. That's what's happening here. You wove me together in my mother's womb. 
you created me. You put the pieces together that I may be this vessel of incredible design. You have woven me together. All of me from head to toe. I am woven with the eye of a skillful weaver creating a design inside that is going to be shown outside by the body type, the morphologic, the, the way you've morphologically developed me, by the color of my skin, the texture of my hair. You wove me together like this. I give thanks to you. No whining here. I give thanks to you because I am fearfully made. I am not some forgotten thing. I am not something that is worthless. No, I am fearfully made, meaning that I have your power within me. I have been made of, of, with incredible craftsmanship. People should be in awe of me, and we should be. Have you ever thought about how awful, full of awe, the human body is? All of the systems that work together, the way that you see, speak, hear, move, all of those systems working together, your heart beating with a certain rhythm, that is fearfully made. It is the awesomeness of how God has made you. God has designed you and I, system upon system inside of us. That people are in awe. We should every day get up and be in awe of how God has made us because we are not junk. I am fearfully and wonderfully made the wonderfulness, and we have the awesomeness of how God has made us. We look at creation and go, oh, oh look at that, that's so wonderful. God made all of that, yes, but God made me too. It is wonderful, wonderful are your works. How majestic are your works. We go places like Italy, Germany, England, Portugal, and we look at all of the fine artistry and craftsmanship of how people sculpt things and design things. And we say, oh, that is so wonderful. If you're in Florence and you go to see David, you stand there and you marvel at the beauty and the intricacy and the wonderfulness of that incredible statue. And then you go to the piazza, the center place, and you see all of these wonderful statues. And you go, oh my, that is so lovely. Oh, you, 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 you fall in love with how it looks. Now look in the mirror. Look in the mirror. All of those sculptures, all of those paintings, all of that artistry is nothing more than a reflection of the wonderfulness, the beauty, if you will, of how God has created you and me. God did not create us and forget about us. No, God has made us, woven us together, made us fearfully and wonderfully made. David follows it up with, wonderful are your works, O Lord. My soul knows it very well. Friends, accept the fact that just as David and all of the great sculptors and painters of history have created art, and we go, how wonderful, how beautiful. Oh, mercy, it is. It's so good. God has made us even better. That's why David responds here, wonderful are your works, Lord. My soul knows it so well. Your frame was not hidden from me when I was skillfully wrought. Again, there's that idea of woven together in the depths of the earth, in my mother's womb. Because, Father, you have made me powerfully, full of awe, wonderful. And then he tacks this on for us, because we can't forget this. 
Because all of this verse here, these verses here, is about how much God loves us. Your eyes have seen my unformed substance. All the days that were ordained for me, you wrote them down in your book even before I was born. That's how God has made us and why he has made us. That's how much he has loved us. Except that, that God has made you fearfully and wonderfully because he loves you. Lord, we bless you for who we are in you and thank you for the joy of being your creation, your vessel of incredible design. These things, Lord, we pray in your name. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.